Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and like and subscribe for more bread next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Katniss Everdeen, champion of the Hunger Games and quite possibly the number one girl you'd want on your squad for a survival type game. If she had Minecraft, she'd be a goddess in her time, but that's how poor her district is. They don't even have Minecraft. That game runs on a toaster at this point. That's sad. <laughs> Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to wrap things up quickly with a bow, not like a Christmas present, like an arrow through the neck. Next, we need to remember that the majority of the Hunger Games are won through patience, so we'll load up with skills to live in the wilds. Finally, we'll get some basic medicine, and you don't even have to pretend to flirt to get it. It was kind of real flirting. He makes bread. Everyone likes bread. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep an eye on your multi-classing minimums. Dexterity will be number one. Your bow skills are the only thing getting you sponsorships in the beginning. Wait, if corporations have enough extra money to sponsor the starving children fighting for entertainment, why don't they just give the money to the poor districts? Could corporations be profiting off of human suffering? Wisdom next, surviving in the wilds requires survival skills, and you need to find your boyfriend when he disguises himself as a cake. Constitution after that, another part of survival is not dying. If you accidentally eat the wrong berries, this will help you deal with poison. Follow that up with strength, you figuratively carry the team to victory, but sometimes you literally carry your team to victory. Intelligence is a bit low, you're not dumb, but District 12 probably isn't rolling in education funding. Hold up charisma, you're sort of a feral gremlin until Woody Harrelson can teach you how to not bite the rich people. Honestly, I think he's screwed up, eat the rich. Katniss is a human. There are monster mashers in later books, but otherwise The Hunger Games is about regular humans in a dystopian society where everyone is isolated from each other and there's a gigantic class divide, forcing the majority to suffer for the amusement of the upper class. Did you know dystopian media isn't a prediction of the future, it's a critique of the world as it is? Did you know that the sharpshooter feat lets you fire ranged weapons with max range without disadvantage, you can ignore all but full cover, and add 10 to the damage rolls of your attack if you're willing to take a negative 5 penalty to the attack roll? It's almost enough to make you forget about class inequality. Bump your dexterity and your constitution with your two free points, take animal handling for your skill of choice, and build your own background for athletics and insight proficiency. We just need so many dang skills, this build sort of ends up becoming a puzzle of what levels to take when, kind of like the Anderson Cooper build, actually. If you want a lot of skills, there's no better place to start than rogue. Rogues get four skills at first level, like stealth, perception, investigation, and performance. The first three are for the tournament, performance is so you can eventually smile next to Nightmare Stanley Tucci. Normally, Stanley Tucci makes me want to smile, but not this one. He an Italian cookbook and just seems like a fun guy. You get expertise in two skills like perception and stealth, doubling your proficiency bonus with them to creep around in the brush and see out of the leaves in your face. You also get sneak attack letting you add a d6 of extra damage to one attack per round as long as you're using a finesse or ranged weapon and have advantage on the attack or an ally within five feet. Ally is sort of a relative term. Point out that if you kill that person, that's one less person for them to kill. Temporary ally, sneak attack, done. Second level rogues get cunning action, letting you dash, disengage, or hide as a bonus action. Generally, I use this as justification for speed, but for you, I'm gonna say hide. Remember, slow and steady wins the race. Turtle up and don't die. Third level rogues can choose a roguish archetype, and scouts get nature and survival skills for free. They also instantly get expertise for those skills, which is why we had to hold out so long for survival. Free expertise is worth the wait, and it's not like you entered the first Hunger Games with no hunting skills. Skirmisher lets you move half your movement speed when a creature ends their turn within five feet of you without provoking an opportunity attack as an archer it's best for you to avoid getting up close and personal if you're far enough away you can use steady aim letting you give yourself advantage on one attack as a bonus action as long as you don't move that turn that means guaranteed sneak attack damage even better since the sneak attack bumps up to 2d6 here fourth level rogues get an ability score improvement dexterity has to be priority number one you're constantly landing borderline impossible shots with your bow if only we had the archery fighting style hey we can get that to dipping over to ranger as well as another skill like medicine you get canny for our expertise and another skill go for medicine again dead friends are a big bummer i don't know whether favored foe or favored enemy is better favored foe lets you add a d4 of damage to the attacks you make against a creature but requires your concentration and will get a better version of that in literally the next level so favored enemy gives you advantage to track two types of humanoids or beasts pick beasts if you want more food humanoids if you want to eliminate the competition i think it honestly is better than favored foe second level rangers get that fighting style we were talking about archery and studio attack rules with ranged weapons helping you alleviate the 
the sharpshooter penalty, basically meaning that you're taking a negative three penalty instead of negative five. You also get ranger spells here, which are kind of like spells that aren't spells. Hunter's Mark lets you pick a creature to wreck for an hour, dealing an extra d6 of damage to them with weapon attacks, and you have advantage to track them. It requires your concentration, so it won't stack with favored foe, and favored foe won't work with your extra attack when we get that later. So I like Hunter's Mark better. Cure Wounds heals 1d8 plus your wisdom modifier as an action. It's rough surviving in a murder tournament. Don't do it with a bunch of injuries. Third level rangers can choose a conclave. Hunters are pretty great at hunting, and so are you. What a coincidence. You can choose a Hunter's Prey. Colossus Slayer lets you deal an extra d8 of damage to a creature once per round if they're below their HP total. It might seem kind of mean, but waiting for the other kids to get weaker is a pretty good strategy for making it to the end game. Fourth level rangers get another ability score improvement. Cap off your dexterity modifier, so you're adding seven plus your proficiency bonus to your ranged attack rolls or two plus your proficiency bonus after the sharpshooter penalty. That's some consistent big damage that gets even more consistent next level. That's because fifth level rangers get extra attack, letting you make two attacks instead of one with your action or 2d8 plus 4d6 plus 30 damage in a single round against a creature you've got hunter's mark on provided that you can get your sneak attack and sharpshooter shots. Also, you can only use steady aim and sneak attack once per round, but Hunter's Mark and Sharpshooter can go on every single attack. You can also learn second level ranger spells like locate animals and plants, letting you know where a kind of animal or plant is within five miles of you. You're looking for a blue flower with red thorns. Blue flower, red thorns. Sixth level rangers get roving, giving you a swimming speed and a climbing speed equal to your walking speed, and that speed goes up by five feet anyway. You can also choose another favorite enemy, so this is how you get humans and beast. Make the humans say, oh deer, and the deer say nothing, because deer can't speak. Seventh level hunter to rangers get a defensive tactic i think steel will is the most in character giving you advantage on saving throws against being frightened you're just a bit too stubborn to be scared or you're really good at faking it bit of both probably eight level rangers get another ability score improvement wisdom will help you with all your tracking feral girl skills honestly those are just as useful in the games as the bow is maybe even more we'll hop back to rogue now fifth level rogues get uncanny dodge letting you reduce incoming damage by half as a reaction as long as you can see the source of damage it's a brutal world so you gotta have a brutish resolve you also get 3d6 sneak attack damage damage here for a better shot. Six level rogues get another round of expertise, this time I'm going investigation and performance. You might have been bad on TV your first go around, but eventually your entourage gets you ready to be the face of the rebellion. Seventh level rogues get evasion, letting you take half damage from failed deck saves and no damage on successful ones. Remember that one year where they just set half the map on fire? You should. You were in that year. Your sneak attack also bumps up to 4d6 here. Eighth level rogues get another ability score improvement. Keep pushing your wisdom up. We're about to fully break it. Just a second though, we need to do a little bit more damage first. Ninth level rogues get superior mobility, adding 10 feet to your movement speed, which pairs really nicely with skirmisher. It's almost as though they were meant to work together in the same class. That extra damage I was talking about was the 5d6 sneak attack damage you get at this level, if I wasn't clear enough about that. Tenth level rogues get another ability score improvement, capping off your wisdom modifier which still isn't what i meant when i said we were going to break it that's just capping it capping it is fine and fun but it doesn't quite make you the best competitor the hunger games have ever seen for that we need to hit the 11th level of rogue for reliable talent meaning the lowest you can roll on skills you're proficient with is a 10 then you get to add your modifier why is that busted well your minimum athletics is 17 performance insight and animal handling are 21 nature and investigation are 22 and stealth perception survival and medicine are 27 those are minimum rolls you can still go higher but you don't really need to that's how you win the tournament just not failing also you get 66 sneak attack damage that can't hurt well it will hurt other people our capstone is the 12th level of rogue for an ability score improvement we don't really need anything else so tough feet 40 more hp less dying it's always fun well probably still miserable in your universe but less miserable than death barely now that we've hit level 20 let's figure out how viable this build is First, you've got consistent damage with 3d8 plus 8d6 plus 30 damage every single round, which averages out to be a little over 60. You're even more consistent out of combat with tons of skills, expertise, and reliable talent, letting you do pretty much anything you would want to. Finally, most archers are squishy and you're not with well over 150 HP by the end of things. So even if someone does get in, you don't have to stress about it. For weaknesses, you have no magical damage, which is fine. You're just fighting other kids, but that can be dangerous at higher levels of D&D. You're also not great at talking to people when you're not performing so forming alliances could be a challenge finally ranger is just straight up not as good as fighter if you win champion you'd have a double critical hit chance a battle master could do cool trick shots and an arcane archer would have magical stuff you're just like better at tracking but tracking is good if you're in a survival type campaign stay alive outlast the competition and save your baby baker boyfriend just make sure nothing happens to him you don't have a lot of pleasant stories to regale your new friends with
Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon for this sheet and a whole bunch more, and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.